In previous videos, we've talked about the type of cables you might use. We've talked about the connectors that you put on the end and how you would wire them. But one of the most important parts is how you put these cables into your environment, where you place them. And there's three different areas that you would want to concentrate on. One is at the workstation. Do the cables go through the ceiling? Do they go through the floor? Are there other cables that are bundled together along with those? You also have cables that might go between floors. If you're in a building and there's multiple floors, then you have these riser cables that might go from one floor to the other. And of course, you have cables in your data center. You have a lot of cables in your data center because there's such a high density of devices that might be in those racks. You don't want your data center looking like this one. You want some cable management and a way to have these cables set up so that you can easily tell exactly what's going on. If you work hard to make sure that that cable plant is designed perfectly, then you're going to avoid a lot of physical level problems with signals in your data centers, at your workstations, or between floors. The placement of these cables becomes very important, especially if you're mixing different cable types. You might have a lot of fiber. You might have a lot of copper. And you'll notice as you have a lot of copper cables in your environment, they might stack up. They get very heavy. You don't want these copper cables to be sitting on top of fiber, which is much more delicate. You don't want to cause any breakages or any problems with that fiber. So make sure that you don't crush the fiber with those copper connections. During the installation process of your fiber plant, you also want to think about the category of cable that you're using. Even if you only need Category 5, you might opt to put Category 6 or Category 6A in because you know later on that you might want to use some faster speeds. It's very difficult to pull out all of this cable afterwards, so you might as well put in the best that you can at the time. Your wiring plant in your data center needs to be centralized. That way you can keep the runs of wire to a minimum, and everything is in the middle of the data center. It makes it very easy to distribute these cables wherever you might need. And if at all possible, use what these folks are doing in this picture, a very structured cabling system that allows you to keep all of the connections neat. Nothing is crimped with cable ties. Here you're using things like Velcro to make sure that none of these cables have any type of of connections that have been kinked inside of them. There's not going to be any shorts. There's not going to be any opens. We'll have the best possible cabling system. And when you have it set up like this, you can know that the cables aren't really going to be your first problem. You can then worry about some other type of issue when you're troubleshooting some type of problem on the network. Once your cable is in, you have to make sure that you're not getting electromagnetic interference or other types of interference that could cause a problem with the cable that you're running through your environment. Whenever you're putting the cable in for the first time, you want to be sure that you don't twist the cable, you don't cause any kinks, you don't pull it or stretch it. This could cause a problem with the copper or with the fiber, and then you're going to have issues with connectivity all the way through. There's something called a bend radius as well. You don't want to take a 90 degree turn with the cable. Different types of cable will allow you to have different types of bend radius. And the same thing applies for fiber as well. So check the manufacturer's requirements for the cable or the fiber that you're using to determine just what the angle of bend should be for that type of cable. You also want to make sure you don't use staples, that you don't use cable ties, that you don't use anything that could possibly kink or cause a problem with that copper or the fiber inside that bunch of cables. Whenever you're working with copper cables, electromagnetic interference becomes an issue that you have to think about. You obviously don't have this problem with fiber connections because fiber is using light. There's nothing in a fluorescent light. There's no type of electromagnetic interference that could cause a problem with light. But with these copper electric signals, it's a big concern. So you have to make sure that you don't get near power cords, that you don't run these fibers over fluorescent lights, because those fluorescent lights have that very powerful transformer inside of them that can create problems for you. Make sure you avoid anything with fire prevention components, anything that might be active electronic devices that are in your ceiling. Just avoid them completely, and you can be assured that you're going to be minimizing the amount of electromagnetic interference that you might get over those copper connections. Once the installation is complete, you've added those cables, you've punched them down, you've put them through your ceiling, they're coming down on the other side, use your test equipment to make sure that you've got a good connection. It's not 
uncommon for people who are installing these large bunches of cables to test every single connection before anybody ever plugs in. That way you can be sure that everything that you've installed, all of your punch downs, all the fibers that are in the ceiling are going to work perfectly when you plug in the end user's equipment.